Yeah, this is, yeah. There we go, I think. Great. Maybe. There. Now do yourself a favor when you're picking out your beads, and if you must have one that has a smallish hole like these little round ones, make sure your other ones all have reasonably sized holes that aren't going to give you a problem because you will hate doing this if you have to fight with every single bead. But there are plenty out there that have large enough holes. So here we have our cluster started. Like I said, I'm going to do groups of six beads. Um, where'd it go? On that other bracelet I showed you, they actually went on. Because they have smaller focals, they actually did clusters of three and then went on to their next fo focal. But my focals are so much bigger that I'm going to do clusters of six. So I shall pause, um, come back, and show you how to proceed. I'm going to finish the cluster on this side and the cluster on this side, and then I will show you how to continue. So here I am back again, as promised, with the clusters on either side of the center focal bead completed. Now in case I wasn't clear on what you do, on each of these three strands, if you're doing clusters of three, you simply do one small bead on each of these strands. If you're doing clusters of six, do two small beads on each strand. I like to do one on each and then go back and do one on each one again, just so that I get them nice and tight. Now the next step is to take all three cords, treat them as one again, and just make another knot, just like you did on either side of your focal bead. And make this knot Take your time and make it nice and tight right up against that cluster. The tighter you get it there, um, the firmer your cluster will be. So do that on either side. Just treating all three strands as one making a simple knot. Okay, now it's time to grab one of your other focal beads. Take one strand and string it on. Sometimes with nuggets and chips, the trick can be finding where they drilled the hole. It can be in any direction. And then just like we did our original focal bead. We've got a knot on one side and a knot on the other. And this, because these are kind of lumpy and bumpy like the chips, you can kind of decide which way you want them to fit. I think I'm going to, that seems to be comfortable like that. So again, treating all three of these as one. Tie a knot and slide it nice and tight up against your focal bead. And we'll do the same on this other side. And the way you get it nice and tight up against your bead is to just take your time. And I use, I kind of use my thumbnail and I just keep pushing and pushing. And there it is. You don't have to pull really hard. The wax on the twine does the job. If you pull too hard, you can break this stuff. So don't do that. Don't make that mistake. Ask me how I know. So that's starting to look really cool. And now we repeat the clusters. 
So the way the pattern goes, it's simply focal beads alternating with clusters of smaller beads with a knot, a, bar, a knot using all three strands in between each one. That's all the pattern is. Uh, again, I can show you on this one. So here's a focal bead, a knot, a cluster, a knot, a focal bead, a knot, and so on, a cluster, a knot. And that's it. That's the whole pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and add these remaining clusters. Now I'm going to add one on each side and then I will add these focals and then I'm going to take a measurement and see where we're at with the bracelet. So I'll come back when that's done. So here we are back again and you can see that I've gone ahead and added two more clusters of six small beads and the two more focal beads. Like I said, it's simply alternating focals with clusters with a knot in between each one. That is your entire pattern. Now this is the point at which I'm ready to take a measurement and see where we're at with this bracelet. An average wrist size is about seven inches. So I don't want to, I don't want this bracelet to be any larger than seven inches. Um, because it's adjustable, it can fit, you know, much bigger sizes than that. So let's just lay that right at the zero. And we're at, oh, about six and a half inches. So I need to stop there because my little slider is going to take up about an inch. Uh, maybe I may make this slider a little smaller than, say, the one on this bracelet. This one is, let's see, oh, it's about three quarters of an inch. So maybe I'll make the slider a little smaller. I just, I don't know who's going to get this bracelet. And I would hate for it to be big and sloppy and uncomfortable on somebody with a small wrist. Although this is a pretty chunky bracelet. Um, so the next step is for me to show you how to make the slider. So I won't be using these beads today. We'll save those for another project. And I won't be using these. Generally, the strands of beads that you buy, they come like this. Like this is a lot of chips because it was this whole other thing. So I probably have enough chips here to make four bracelets. And there was, I think there were six of these and there was a whole pile of these red nuggets. So I bought um, six different strands of beads and I probably have enough on there to make at least two or three bracelets if not more. If you got creative with the leftovers you could get even more. So, when we come back, I will be ready to show you how to finish up your bracelet by making the slider. See you then. So now we're ready to finish our bracelet by making a, an adjustable slider that you can move to get it on and off. The way we're going to do that is to lay your bracelet down on a surface, take the three cords that are on the right, Bring them up and over so they're pointing to the left. Next, take the three cords that are on the left and bring those up and over across the others so they're pointing to the right. So now you can see it's starting to look like a bracelet. And you, this is one reason we like to have a lot of extra cord is so that you have plenty of room to work. We're going to build our slider over these six strands right here. In fact, that's what I'm going to call this right now, is our six-strand bundle. And it's just by taking the two sets of three cords and crossing them over each other to form your bracelet. So the next thing you'll need are two 12-inch pieces of the cord. And we'll start by making a loop all about a few inches from the end, two or three inches from the end, make a loop. Have the short end on the left 
and poke this under your six strand bundle and then just poke both ends right up through the loop. And then pull it snug. And actually right here you can see, let me zoom in for you, what we're making here. This is called a lark's head knot, in case you were interested. And this is what it should look like. Keep that short end on the left and just pull it snug. Next we'll take our other 12 inch cord, do the same thing, make a loop a few inches from the end, only this time tuck the loop from the top down and then repeat, go ahead and put both, poke both ends. Fumble fingers. There we go. Poke both ends through. Keep that shorter end on the left. And pull it snug. And snug it up against the first knot that you made. 